Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwant, and today we are checking out Immortals of Aveum. Now, this game has been floating around for a while. It was initially shown off at the Game Awards of 2022, so it's been floating around since December of last year. Uh, and it's coming out finally in August after a brief delay. I believe it was originally supposed to release, I think, in like July or something like that. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, if you need more time to finish your game, I would much rather you do that than release an unfinished product because we get too many of those nowadays. That said, I do have some thoughts about this game, but I'm going to save them for after we watch some more of these trailers uh, because we have some seen it appear in some of the showcases like i said the game awards it was also at like the summer games uh summer game fest and stuff like that uh and before i share like some of my already established thoughts based off of my memory of those trailers i will allow it to like show itself off again and see if it makes me feel any differently uh so we're gonna start back with there we got what is this uh seven trailers um all the way leading up to july 21st at comic-con um but we'll we'll get there as we get there so let's roll it back here we go. It's dangerous for you here. A great many people died in this war. Your men killed my family. This is very Avengers Marvel Marvel feeling right now. Champion protectors of Lucy. Hero of Yulthium Fields. Hero of Yulthium Fields. All you are is angry. All of Avium is crumbling apart. You don't win in ever war. You help us win this. I'll know you're ready. So that was just the cinematic teaser. This is the official reveal trailer from April. This is Avium. Since we first learned to use magic, we've waged war over who would control it. Now, only Lucium remains to resist the tyrant of Rashan. Sandrak will eventually be able to block our access to magic. Then the Ever War is over. Over? As in he takes over Lucium? As in he takes over everything. Ah, it sucks to be that dude. Oh, it really fucking sucks to be that dude. <laughs> There's a name for what you are. A Magnus. I want to be an immortal. I want to fight this war as one of you. One of the elite. I believe in you. She definitely thinks you're going to die. That's why her face looks like that. So here's the actual gameplay. You walk towards your doom. Some of it. Doom and I are old friends. Yeah, Doom guy, you know him? Your sigil will help you focus your magic. Prevent it from killing you. Man, I didn't realize until watching these just how Marvel coded this is. Like, if you told me that Dude Bro here was like a random comic superhero that 
they just didn't give a whole lot of attention to, and this was his newest movie, I would believe you. Back up. Option A was to kill me? Especially with the little quippy, quippy statements. All right, here's the gameplay first look trailer. Definitely not Doctor Strange. Yeah, definitely not. This is a little loud for my ears. Shrine Forge used to create this binding stone was under all that sand. What matters now is that we have a location for a location. Ley lines are too unstable in that storm. She was in Firefly and, and Angel. Have okay. Down their I have not seen either of those. Get prepped for I'm sure to drop. many people's surprise. That is a joke. Yeah, so I recall seeing parts of this trailer, I think, on Twitter. And it went from, like, something that I thought was kind of cool to something that I no longer thought was kind of cool. And, like, I've seen some people talking about this, and they're like, man, check out this sweet action spell-slinging game. And I was like, that's not what this is, okay? Because, like, if you want an action-based spell-slinging game... Go play Forspoken. That game has issues, but that game is one of the most, like, magic-feeling action games that I have played, okay? Like, genuinely, that game does some really cool stuff when it comes to its combat. It's got a lot of other issues, but its combat is not necessarily one of them, in my opinion. Uh, I did a full review on the game. For Forspoken, I did. This is not a spell-slinging game, Okay. This game, to me, is just a first-person shooter. But instead of holding a shotgun and a rifle and, like, an Uzi, you have a gauntlet that changes between those, and it's all magic-themed. Like, instead of just grabbing an Uzi and shooting an Uzi, you shoot, like, you know, multiple little fireballs and stuff. This is magical doom, yeah, because that's a good way to phrase it real. Like, that's a, actually a, a better way than what I'm trying to say. Like, this is just doom 2016, but with magic instead of guns. It is definitely a first-person shooter. This gives me Destiny vibes, yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, too. And it's not to say that it doesn't like it's not to say that it doesn't look good but it's just like it doesn't look like it's doing anything that makes me want to play it when it's just basically a, a first person shooter <laughs> gotta have a grappling hook gotta have a glider what's modern video games without grappling hooks and gliders Also, like, does the game have a UI and you're just not showing it here? Oh, that was, that was purple loot. Mm, it's a looter, guys. Oh, look at that screen. Oh. Oh, you got fucking shit different quality loot. You got fucking purples and greens and whites and they got random meaningless fucking numbers tacked onto them like they're some sort of metal. You know how tired everyone is of seeing this screen? Like this exact screen? There's so many games that look like this. And it's just like we're all tired of it. Like whether it's like Vandishar said with Destiny, people were shitting all over Suicide Squads because it looked the same way. Fucking Gotham Knights, freaking Redfall. They all look exactly the same. The bland ass menu. Thanks, real. Yeah, they all have the same font. They're all meaningless. You just. You just look at the list of what slot it is and pick the one with the biggest number. 
very rarely do they ever actually result in any meaningful difference to the gameplay. It just makes your damage go up. This isn't that hard, guy. There you go. You're getting closer. There you go. Like, visually, this game looks pretty good. Like, graphical fidelity-wise, looks pretty good. If this is authentic gameplay, it's running pretty good. Um, the spell effects are, are, like, flashy and fun. The world design is, it definitely just feels like something out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um... But it doesn't look necessarily like it's gonna be the most fun thing you've ever played in the last 10 years. EA, so I guess microtransactions. Well, an EA original is different from a game that is like FIFA, right? Because like, remember that EA are the people that paid for like the Star Wars games. Like, mind you, they are the people that made like Star Wars Battlefront 2, but they're also the people that paid for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. Those were made by Respawn Entertainment, but they're still from EA because EA paid for them. And those games don't have the microtransactions and stuff in them, so. Yeah, it was originally gonna be on July 20th. It is not any longer on July 20th. Here's the official gameplay trailer. Sir, it's the hand. Follow. But do not engage. Maybe engage a little. have established a stronghold and Kirkin seems to think you might not get me killed jury's still out on that one you think you could like it a lot I mean the market's there not every game is for everybody but some games are for some people Sharnians haven't had enough yet. We haven't given them enough yet. Your men killed my family. Don't turn your back on me! Who's that? Visuals are definitely nice, yeah. Visuals are definitely nice. <laughs> you, you killed my family. I've killed a lot of families. You're going to need to do a whole lot more specific than that. Uh, this is the official Colossal Sandrax Assault gameplay trailer. Us to the edge. Everyone that can fight already is. It's not Sauron. And we're still losing. Oh, hi. Welcome aboard, immortal. What's our bearing, sir? North by northeast, five knots. 
We'll catch him. So. Do you get to play as the big fuck off giant? You get to play on the giant fuck off giant. Hey, we have a UI now. Get to the control room and protect Selco. Zendara and I will hold off the Rashanians down here. Got it. Gotta get to the control room. You can fly around a little bit. I want to see him take damage. Like, is that golden bar in the bottom left your HP? That menu in the bottom left is also very Dark Souls looking. We got some new magical effects. We got like a black hole style effect. Little of that UI was an intuitive. I want to fight this war as one of you. You're what's called a triarch. The Pentasod has gifted you with the ability to manifest all three colors of magic. We're only going to win this one together. Did you love? I feel like that was one of the best trailers they've had so far. This is the unpacked trailer. These trailers are fucking long, though. Everyone that can fight already is, and we're still losing. We're only going to win this one together. Sigil up. This is Immortals of Avium. A single player, first person magic shooter where you unleash an arsenal of magic spells in fast-paced combat that defies FPS conventions. Does it? In the world of Avium, magic powers everything. From industry and everyday life to the military might of its five kingdoms. But this world is crumbling apart. For thousands of years, these kingdoms have killed each other over the control of magic. They call it the ever war how do they still have enough Jack, people a triarch an extremely rare type of spellcaster capable of wielding all three colors of magic with this precision. dude's name is jack as well damn it for context we saw another two or three games in just the last like week that all of the fucking white dude as for main characters from the action games, their names are all fucking Jack. Together with Lucium's elite battle mages, an order of Magni called the Immortals, Jack must race to stop Rasharn's tyrant Andrak and prevent Avium from falling into oblivion. Your weapon, called a sigil, will help you focus the magic within you. Are this is Magic Jack, though. Instead of Space Jack. And deadly in or combat. Fantasy Jack. This is Magic Jack. Red sigils empower a Magnus's close quarters combat capabilities. Blue sigils focus magic into powerful bolts for long range engagements. Green sigils cast rapid fire homing projectiles that enable mobile combat maneuvers. Fury spells are heavy, more powerful spells that drain your mana bar. Okay. 
and you'll need to find and crush mana crystals to replenish it. Augment spells allow you to manipulate and navigate the world around you. Oh, that was cool. These can be used to scale precarious chasms. Uh, he was doing a JoJo pose. Out of the way, or access hidden locations. They also assist in solving puzzles. Control spells assist in combat by allowing Jack to pull enemies toward him, slow enemies, or stun enemies. In Immortals of Avium, your most Boss powerful bar. attack is called Immolate. It charges up over time and is released as a destructive beam of red, blue, and green magic to disintegrate anything in your way. Although all colors of magic will damage most enemies, matching your magic attack with the enemy's magic color will more efficiently shred their armor and reduce their defenses. Mastering your magic means customizing your spell cast. Yeah, man, sorry, I agree. At least he's giving some info. Discover 25 different spells and unlock over Sphere grid. talents. Loot hundreds of handcrafted items. Craft, Ugh. dismantle, and upgrade your clutch gear in the forge. Equip Don't worry, it's got tokens, crafting. Rings and bracers to boost your spells, abilities, and stats in combat. Venture out from three bustling hubs to explore vibrant landscapes. Delve into unknown depths and embark on some of the most dangerous and covert missions as one of Lucian's elite immortals. Jack and the immortals are running out of time. In the middle of Avium is the wound, a formless void, ever growing, ever dividing the realm. On the other side of the front lines is the seemingly unstoppable Sandrak, amassing more power with each passing day. This is Immortals of Avium. Summon your power. Stop the ever war. Save the realms. How how close to the end of the game do you think that last shot was? Where there's some sort of, of giant special crystal like that is like rainbow colored and it's you and the super big bad evil guy trying to like both grab it at the same time? from the final scene in the game. All right, this is the last one. This is from Comic-Con back in July. This is the front. The bulk of the Light's army musters there, ready for the big push. I've run through the war games Ow. countless Ow. times. When Sandrak had the Binding Stone, our chances were slim to none. All these soldiers, when you look at them, Jack, what do you see? I know you want me to say I see loyalty or, or duty or something like that. All right, that way I can step into some irony or whatever you can use to... Look, I know you're using this as some kind of preamble to tell me you're angry with me. I am goddamn furious. I'm sorry. I got to the Shrine Forge and... And there was a choice I could make. No, there wasn't. There wasn't a choice. Who told you there was a choice? Zendara! You were as field commander. Did you get to the Shrine Forge and say, make it up as you go along? No, sir. Our objective was to figure out a way to destroy the Binding Stone. Then why is it in my war chamber, commander? I gave no indication that we were to deviate from that objective, sir. So you're telling me that you're unable to control your people. Is that it? Don't yell at her. I did it. Chain of command, Jack. And I'm getting to you. Okay, okay. If I can just say one thing. That right there is unnecessary with that right there. I got us control of the ultimate weapon. And we can roll right now into Rashan by ourselves and force their surrender without firing a shot. Oh, you've got it all worked out. I didn't realize that. Am I the only one in the room that sees the last 24 hours as an unbelievable victory? I mean, what part of ultimate weapon don't you like? The part where it's a corrupted Aristean artifact, Jack. When we all know Aristean is really just another word for weapons from yesteryear that we are absolutely unprepared for. Maybe you're unprepared. And you aren't? When I found you, the only thing you were prepared for was exploding and taking the rest of Saren with you. The last time I talked with Sandrak, he pulled the same you wouldn't exist without me lecture you are. So you're a little late to the party, sir. 
You will go back to the Shrine Forge and get the mark you were ordered to in the first place. Can't do it. And then you will come back here <laughs> and destroy this thing. Oh, no, I'm, I'm being for real. I, I can't. The machine, it, well, it, it broke. Don't fuck with me, Jack. Are you serious right now? I'm not. And I am. All right, and I can control it. Why can't you see that? You can't control it. No one can. What if Sandrak really isn't gone, and he gets it back? What then? It stays here, under lock and key. Take it to the vault. You're making a mistake. Take it to the goddamn vault! Okay. So one thing that I was noticing, and I don't know how well it'll appear up on the little viewfinder here, there was some weird shit going on with the graphics. Um, so if you look at this character, I was admiring their hair while they were talking, but then I noticed that some weird shit was happening with their hair of like, there was some, like it, like it looked like their hair was freaking like warping and bubbling. Um, I don't know if it'll come through super well, but just pay attention to their hair braids. Slim to none. All these soldiers. You see how they like pulse when and shit? When you look at them, Jack, what do you see? I don't know if it's coming through well enough just because of like compression and I don't have a full screen window. I wish I could like zoom in on a part of the video, but like. It was really distracting because of the way that their tonight. hair was like weirdly flowing, but it shouldn't because they have hair braids. When you look at anyway, sorry, just a random observation that I had while uh, we were going through that. So all of that is Immortals of a Vium. A, a, a Vium was that what it actually was? Was Immortals of a Vium? I think so. And, like, I'm still so, I still feel so weird about it. Because, like, on one hand, it's, like, got this really high production quality going on. Like, visually, it's really high end. But it also literally just looks and feels like a Marvel movie. While also just being a, a fairly generic first-person shooter that is inside a Marvel movie. And... I feel like there's a better game that could exist if one of these things was given more time or attention. And I'm not sure which direction it needed to go, but it just feels like super mid while trying to pretend that it is something insanely high class. And I don't know. I don't know. That's just kind of where I sit on this. It's not something that I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll jump into that. But it's also not something that I'm like, I don't want anything to do with that. Like, if this was on Game Pass, I'd probably be like, yeah, sure, I'll fucking play it. But I know that this game is probably like $70 because it's a single-player FPS experience. It's $60 on Steam, but I bet on freaking PlayStation it's 70 because PlayStation 5 games are just $70 now. So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are. Like, maybe I'm just missing the mark on this, or maybe it's just not quite tickling my fancy in the way that it is for other people. Um, I know a lot of people are always looking for more FPS games because those, like, one, you can end up getting through FPS games really, really fast. Because uh, most of the time, if they do have a campaign or story mode, they're fairly short, and so people devour them in, like, one sitting, and it's not even a very long sitting, and they're like, well, that was cool. What's next? Um, there's also a, a potential for a lot of grinding on this game because we saw like the gear system and the loot system and the way that you can like cannibalize gear to get crafting materials to craft other gear. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe there's a lot more, like a lot longer legs to this game than it initially comes across as. So, this is an impulsive, impulse seasonal sale game for me. Yeah, I could see that being where I sit on it too, but... Anyway, that's Immortals of a VM. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. If you'd rather speak elsewhere, a couple good places to do so are Discord and Twitter. I'm very active on both, uh, but we're also on Threads, Blue Sky, Instagram, Miss Key. Take your pick. Or 
you can join us on stream because much like you can see here, we've been having a conversation with chat. This video was recorded live on Twitch and I'd love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you go from the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream. Thank you and enjoy.